The Silky Wife. This story is told all over Scotland, and it is one of our most famous. In Orkney, they say it happened in Orkney, and throat from egg say it happened on egg. I'm from East Lothian, so I say it happened there. North Berwick is a pretty seaside town close to Edinburgh and popular with tourists. In bygone days it was a quiet fishing village, and in a house by the harbour there lived a man named Tam. Tam was a fisherman. He lived with his mother, and though he was of marrying age, he wasn't married yet. Back then, everyone in Scotland celebrated the summer solstice. Tam had been invited to a Cayley at Tyningham a few miles down the coast. He spent the day at sea on his fishing boat, and in the evening he put on his best clothes and left the house, heading along the beaches and cliff-toff paths towards Tyningham. Tam reached the Cayley house. He opened the door and a wall of noise nearly knocked him off his feet. The party was in full swing. He downed a mug of ale, joined in the dancing, and the hours flew by. Eventually, Tam told himself it was time to go. There was fishing to be done the following day, and he had already stayed out too late. He said his goodbyes and left the house, heading home the way he came. It was a beautiful night to be abroad. The midsummer sky was a deep, dusky blue and lit by a thousand stars. He reached Ravenshook Sands, a great sweeping arc of golden sand, and took off his boots to walk barefoot. A faint breeze caressed the dune grass, languid waves lapped the shore. Tam walked in silence along the golden sands, listening to the music of the waves. He reached the end of the beach where a talon of rocks reaches out into the sea, and paused when a sound reached his ears. It wasn't a sound he expected to hear on the beach in the middle of the night. It was the sound of singing. Tam reached the rocks. He climbed up, looked out to sea, and saw the one who was singing. On a stretch of sand ringed by black rocks out where the outcrop met the sea, a woman was singing and dancing. She wore not a stitch of clothing. Her skin was pale, her hair was a dark brown, and her dance was like nothing Tam had ever seen. She spun, leapt, and threw herself across the sand. She laughed and sang, wailed and cried. The sun and moon, the sea and sky, all the beauty and pain of life were in her dance. She seems to feel so much sadness and joy, terror and wonder, that if she didn't dance, she would burst into flames. Tam clambered over the rocks towards her, pulled like a moth to a lamp. He tripped and fell, for his eyes were fixed on her. She kept her eyes closed, so she didn't see him coming, and she didn't hear him approaching over the sound of her own song. Tam drew close. He hid behind a rock, in case she opened her eyes. She was the most wonderful, the most beautiful thing he had ever seen in his life. He had been waiting all his life to meet her, but never known it. On the sand, close to where she danced, was a seal skin. Tam stared at the skin. He looked up again at the woman with her pale skin and chestnut brown hair, dancing naked on the beach at midsummer. He understood now what she was. She was a seal woman, a silky. Tam knew a hundred silky stories. Every fisherman did. Some folk believed in them, some folk didn't, and Tam was one of those who didn't. But he couldn't deny his own eyes. The woman in front of him was a silky a person who wore the skin of a seal and lived out on the sea. The night passed. The silky went on dancing. Hours went by, and Tam barely noticed. As swiftly as a gan it strikes the sea, he had fallen in love with the silky woman. Everything she felt, he wanted to feel too. He had to be with her. He had to marry her. There was a problem, though. A very big problem. <laughs> she was a silky. When the sun rose, she would grab her skin, wrap it around her shoulders and dive into the sea. She would be a seal again. A dark thought stole into Tam's mind. No, he told himself, he couldn't do that. But he had to be with her. He would love her like no one else could and she would be happy with him. This was the only way to do it. She would thank him for it in time. Tam emerged from his hiding place. He crept from the rocks onto the sand. Ever so quietly, he circled the silky woman until he reached the place where her sealskin lay. He picked it up and took it back to his hiding place, stowing it among the rocks. Tam waited. Soon the air brightened. The sky turned crimson and scarlet as the sun rose over the horizon. The moment it rose, the silky woman ceased dancing. She opened her eyes and looked for her skin, and it wasn't where she'd left it. Frantically, she searched for it. She shrieked as Tam leapt upon her. He wrestled her to the ground. 
She was strong, but he was stronger. He wrapped his arms around her and threw her over his shoulder, grabbing her sealskin and putting it under his arm. Tam set off for home as she kicked and punched and screamed. By the time they reached Tam's house, she had given up screaming and struggling. Tam's mother was out of bed. She was bent over the fireplace, stirring a pot of porridge, when the front door burst open. In came Tam, with a sealskin under one arm and a naked woman over his shoulder. What? Who? Tam paid her no notice. He locked the front door behind him and sat the woman down in a chair before the fire. He took a blanket and wrapped it around her. She stared into the fire. Tam filled a bowl of porridge and put it into her hands. It fell to the floor. Tam, what's going on? Tam explained to his mother. She thought it was madness, but he didn't care what she thought. He didn't go out fishing that day. All day he tended to the silky woman bringing her food and drink, telling her all would be well. He told her she would get used to living in a house and to him. He only left her to hide away her seal skin. Tam had a room at the back of the house where he kept his fishing gear. In there was an old sea chest he'd inherited from his father. He locked the skin in the chest and put the key on a string about his neck. The summer passed. The silky woman sat in her chair staring into the flames of the fire. The look in her face was that of a caged animal. At first, she refused all food and drink, but she had to eat and drink, so soon enough she did. Tam sat with her every evening talking to her, telling her stories, making clothes for her. Whether out of boredom, loneliness or the first stirrings of affection, she began to respond. She started to sit at the table where they had their meals to use a knife and fork. There were a few books in the house and Tam read to her. Later he taught her to read. She learnt quickly, reading each book over and over, discussing them with Tam late into the night. By the time winter came, they were talking and laughing together as if they had known each other for years. Spring came. The silky woman had fallen in love with Tam. He married her and she began to take ill in the mornings. They had their first child the following winter, a boy. A girl followed the next year and both children were blessed with health. They grew up never knowing the mother's secret, but after Tam's mother died a few years later, no one in the world but Tam and his silky bride knew it. Tam's wife didn't even want to admit the truth to herself. It was easier to forget her other life, easier to forget that the man she'd loved had torn her from it, kicking and screaming. Since Tam took her skin, her memories of her life beneath the waves had faded, as had her anger towards Tam. That life was no more than a dream now, her memories as faint as wisps of smoke. Tam, she said to him in bed one night, the first time she joined him there, I need you to promise me something. What? Promise me you'll never let me see my sealskin. I know you have it hidden somewhere. You must keep it safe, for if you destroyed it, you would destroy me. But you must, must keep it hidden. For all I love you and wish to be with you always, I know what will happen if I see my skin. I'll touch it. If I touch it, I'll stroke it. If I stroke it, I want to put it to my face and smell it. If that happens, nothing on earth, sea or sky, will keep me from running to the water. I would die beneath the waves and never come back to you. Tam took her word seriously. He always kept the key on the string around his neck or buried deep in his pockets. Word went about North Berwick one summer that there would be a fair at the Kirk. The town was buzzing with excitement. There would be jugglers and tumblers, singers and players, and traders selling all manner of things. The morning of the fair came. Tam and his wife were sitting at the table eating their breakfast while the children danced around the room, too excited to eat. Are we going yet, Daddy? Mummy, can we go now? I'm ready, said Tam, finishing his porridge. Mum, are you ready? No, she said, I've still got the washing to take in. Oh, but Mum... You all go, said Tam's wife. It won't take me long, and I'd like to know everything's done before I leave. Go on, I'll see you there. Tam kissed her on the cheek and left, the children running ahead of him. After clearing up the breakfast dishes, Tam's wife went out to the garden with a washing basket. She lifted Tam's trousers off the line and something fell from his pocket onto the grass. She knelt down and picked it up. It was a key. She looked at it for a long time. Two voices whispered in her mind. One said, put it back in his pocket. Leave the house now. Join your family and forget this ever happened. The other said, it wouldn't hurt to look. Just one look, for old time's sake. She turned around and went back into the house. Through the hall she walked. She opened the door to Tam's fishing room. It was dark in there, the salty smell of the ocean thick in the air. Faint light entered through one dusty window. At the back of the room was an old sea chest. She walked over to it, knelt down and put the key in the lock. She turned the key. The lock clicked open. Warning screamed in her mind as she opened the chest. Within it was her skin. She shuddered. So many forgotten things came flooding back. Her people, her cave, the surging sea beneath her. 
It was enough to look. She should close the chest now. But she didn't. She reached out and touched it, stroked it. Her fingers gripped it tightly. Before she could stop herself, she buried her face in it, rubbing her brow against it. Yes, she said to herself. Yes, this is right. I want this. Her children's faces appeared in her mind, as if their spirits were crying out to her, and she almost answered. But in that moment, she breathed in the smell of the skin. The sea's roar filled her ears and filled her mind. She ran out of the room, out of the house. She ran to the beach and waded into the water and plunged in, tears streaming down her face. When Tam and the children arrived home that afternoon, they saw that the door of the house was wide open. The children went rushing in, shouting, Mummy, Mummy, look what I bought! Tam stood in the garden, staring at the open door. He felt in his pocket for the missing key. In that moment, Tam knew he would never see his wife again. He never did. His children did, though. They would be walking or playing on the beach, and sometimes they would hear the bark of a seal. They would look out to sea, and there, bobbing on the waves, was a seal. It would see them watching and cry out to them, again and again. It was the saddest sound they had ever heard. That and the sound their father made weeping alone by the fire each night. The end. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the wee bell notification. And a huge big thank you to all my subscribers and patrons. See you next week. Bye bye.